the first life of Mrs. Chuck, fixed in cancer, yeah. nearly been an old mill. Yeah. And same time from September, she yeah. seems to have out. No.
Hello, ladies and gentlemen. This is new for me, uh, front of house. I always say to David and Les, who's front of house this morning? <laughs> so, uh, welcome all, and uh, we'd like to welcome Ian, and thank Ian for coming tonight. He's a frequenter of our church and frequenter of the men's breakfast. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so, <laughs> so uh, I don't think there's so. any more announcements. So, uh, over okay. to you, Ian. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Yes, I had a phone call from Les about half an hour ago to say, Ian, can you be in charge tonight? So I said, I'm used to that, that's fine. <laughs> so uh, it's lovely to be with you anyway, even if, even if we are few in number, uh, it makes no difference. The Lord is among us, he's here. And I'm sure he will bless and encourage us. So let's pray. Lord, we just thank you and praise you that when two or three are gathered in your name, there are you in the midst. We thank you that you are here in our midst tonight. We invite you into our hearts and into our lives afresh. And we pray that your Holy Spirit will hover over us and will empower us and will bless us and will teach us. For Jesus' sake. Amen. Right, we're going to sing God sent his son. Tonight our theme is God is Love, following on from what I preached last time. And so we're going to start off just by listening to the words of one of John chapter 1 and the first few verses. 
in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him all things were made, without him nothing was made that has been made. In him was life, and that life was in the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, but the darkness has not understood it. There came a man who was sent from God, his name was John. He came as a witness to testify through him, all men might believe. He himself was not the light, he came only as a witness to the light. The true light that gives light to every man was coming into the world. Sing again, God is love. passage is 1 John 4 verses 7 to 12. I'm just going to read that to you now. It talks about God's love and ours. Dear friends, let us love one another, for love comes from God. Everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God because God is love. This is how God showed his love among us. He sent his one and only Son into the world that we might live through him. This is love, not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his Son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. Dear friends, since God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God, but if we love one another, God lives in us, and his love is made complete in us. I'm going to sing, make, a, make me a channel of your peace.
going to sit. To spend a few minutes now praying, I mean, I don't know whether there are particular people or things that you want to pray for, uh, but I will open in prayer and then I'll close after a few minutes. So let's pray. Lord, we just want to praise and thank you that today is a special day in the lives of the ladies of the church. As we think of mums and all that they do for us or have done for us in the past, we just pray that you will encourage and bless them in their quiet ministry for you. Help them, Lord, to know your peace and your strength. We pray especially for those who, for whom today is not perhaps a happy day for one reason or another. We just pray that you will be a comfort to those who perhaps lost their children and for those who really struggle. And we just ask for your blessing upon them in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Amen.
Yes, Lord, we do praise and thank you for every blessing that you have poured upon us. We thank you for all the blessings you poured upon this church, that despite all the problems of COVID, you have continued to build your church and that the gates of hell cannot prevail against it. Thank you, Lord, for all those who have given their lives to Jesus. Thank you too, Lord, for all those who have been challenged and are thinking about what they've heard. We just pray, Lord, that you will bring salvation into the hearts and lives of many, many more people in this town. For Jesus' sake. Amen. Here is love vast as the ocean. find the, the words. Okay, we're there. <laughs> pray. Lord, we thank you for your word and we just pray that the, the words, literally the words of your word may come alive to us tonight. We just invite your Holy Spirit to take these words and to speak them into our hearts and lives, to change us, to build our faith, to encourage us and if necessary, to convict us, for Jesus' sake. Amen. Like a recap, because of the fact that it's a while since I preached the last sermon here, I've been to uh, the Free Evangelical Church in, Ash in Ashby since then. Um, first time I've ever been to it, but it's quite interesting. <laughs> so uh, uh, things have been busy. We've looked at the main test to know who and what the message of God is and what is false. So we've looked at the truth, 
and what is false. So I just want to reread for you chapter 3 uh, in 1 John and verses 22 and 23. Dear friends, if our hearts do not condemn us, we have confidence before God and receive from anything we ask because we obey his commands and do what pleases him. And this is his command, to believe in the name of his Son, Jesus Christ, and to love one another as he commanded us. Those who obey his commands live in him and he in them. And this is how we know that he lives in us. We know it by the spirit he gave us. So we concluded from the last study in, in 1 John 4 verses 1 to 6 that Jesus was holy man and of course was holy divine as well. And he was therefore able to atone for our sin, to forgive us. We concluded that the test of whether a spirit was of God or what was the, whether the messenger acknowledged Jesus' humanity as well as his sonship. And that helps us know then what is right and what is wrong. And this chapter continues from verses 7 to 12, concentrating on what um, the word in Greek is agape, uh, is on love, and it comes in many different forms and many times in this short passage. The highest love the highest level, should I say, of love that is spoken of in the Bible. God's sovereign love. That's what it says. This evening, we're going to look at this. God's commandment is to believe in Christ and to love one another. And this is the third time in this letter that John talks about mutual love. Chapter 2 and verses 7 to 11 we read uh, find it <laughs> John 2 verses 7 to 11 dear friends I'm not writing to you a new command but an old one which you have had since the beginning this old command is the message you have heard yet I'm writing to you a new command its truth is seen in him and you because the darkness is passing and the true light is already shining. Anyone who claims to be in the light but hates his brother is still in the darkness. Whoever loves his brother lives in the light and there is nothing in him to make him stumble. But whoever hates his brother is in the darkness and walks around in the darkness. He does not know where he's going because the darkness has blinded him. And then in ver chapter 3, verse 11 to 18, it says this. This is the message you heard from the beginning. We should love one another. Don't be like Cain, who belonged to the evil one and murdered his brother. Why did he murder him? Because his own actions were evil and his brothers were righteous. Do not be surprised, my brothers, if the world hates you. We know that we have passed from death to life because we love our brothers. Anyone who does not love remains in death. Anyone who hates his brother is a murderer, and you know that no murderer has ever entered, and you know that no murder has eternal life in him. This is how we know what love is. Jesus Christ laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for our brothers. If anyone has material possessions and sees his brother in need, but has no pity on him, how can the love of God be in him? Dear children, let us not love with words or tongue, but with actions and the truth. So in this reference that we have here in 1 John, to love, John is constant concerned to relate the love which should be in us, not to the true light, which is already shining, nor to the eternal life, which is the evidence, but to God's very nature of love, and with his loving activity in Christ and in us. So John goes on, as I say, to speak about agape love in its highest form. 
on three occasions he uses a refrain. Verse 7 of uh, chapter 4 says this, Dear friends, let us love one another. That's an exhortation. It's an order from God. Verse 11, we read, Dear friends, since God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. So it's our duty to love one another. And thirdly, in verse 12, no one has ever seen God, but if we love one another, God lives in us and his love is made complete in us. So that's like a, if you like a hypothesis, if you know what that means. So John uses every tool he can in order to tell his readers that loving one another is a command and must be practiced by all who call themselves believers. And it's a real key, isn't it, to the effectiveness of our witness and life in Christ. Loving one another points those who are seeking the Lord, as we've heard about the, the guy in the, in the car or lorry or whatever it was going up to Scotland or coming from Scotland, that those seeking the Lord as the light and love of Christ shines through them to Jesus. So God has revealed himself to us in Jesus Christ. He's revealed himself in self-sacrificial love. So in summary of that, it is because God is love in himself, has loved us in Christ, and continues to love in and through us, that you and I must love one another. How well are we doing? That's the question, isn't it? How well are we doing? Are we uh, getting there? Are we on that road to loving one another more and more? So as God is the source of love, he is love and love is of God. So love is rooted in God. It's part of his character, if you like. So if we love God and man, then it follows that we are born of God and know God because God is love in his inmost being so what can we learn about the substance and nature of God we learn in various other passages like John chapter 24 he is spirit we also learn in 1 John 1 5 he is light and he's also consuming fire which we read about in Hebrews 12 verse 29 so we can conclude from all this that all God's activity is loving. Now we might not think that consuming fire is very loving, uh, but you'll see in a minute what I mean by that. Let's unpack it. If he judges, he judges in love. Furthermore, if he's judging in love, his loving is also justice. But he's also light and fire. He who is light exposes sin, doesn't he? For what it is, rebellion against God and his commands. And then, because he's fire, he consumes sin without consuming the sinner. Praise God. He consumes sin without consuming the sinner. Instead, he saves him. He saves him. That is the moment of conversion. So a further conclusion can be reached from what John says here. If we don't love God, then we don't know him, do we? When you think about the people who reacted against Jesus in his ministry on earth, they did so because they didn't recognize him as God and so did not know him. A loveless Christian who claims to know God is very much like a person who says, he is intimate with a foreigner whose language he doesn't speak. A, loving, a loveless Christian who claims to know God is like a person who says he is intimate with a foreigner whose language he doesn't speak. We know them by their fruit. Galatians chapter 5 gives us a very clear picture of that. So those who claim to be Christians must manifest the nature of God in their lives. Namely, this agape love that this passage is speaking about. So we can see, first of all, the argument that we should love one another is based 
on God's eternal nature. He is love. Secondly, in verses 9 and 11 here, it says, this is how God showed his love among us. He sent his one and only son into the world that we might live through him. This is love. Not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. He sent his son, his begotten son, into the world to atone for our sins. So the sending of God's son into a sinful world was the revelation of his love to mankind and also the very essence of love itself. All our love is a spontaneous response to his love, a mere reflection of it. So the arrival of Jesus, God's only begotten Son, is a clear historical revelation of the love of God. And Jesus, of course, was promised right back in the Old Testament uh, hundreds of years before he actually arrived here on earth in the flesh. The arrival of Jesus, God's only begotten Son, is a clear historical revelation of the love of God. And his self sacrificial love is beyond all levels of love, isn't it? <coughs> the fact that he gave his life upon the cross of Calvary. What a sacrifice. So nothing can compare with God's gift of his son to die on the cross in order to forgive us and fill us with his nature, love. No greater gift could be possible. He was the propitiation, that's one word that's used, the expiation, there are various other uh, terms to use, the atoning one, the one who atones for our sin, who forgives our sin by his selfless activity on dying on the cross of Calvary. And for all of us who know Jesus, there is a point where that happened. Uh, the first time I personally encountered God uh, was when I was about 10 years old. Uh, I, hadn't, I didn't go to church, didn't know anything about God really, other than singing the odd hymn at uh, assembly in school. And uh, I was walking down a street near London in a place called Worcester Park with my grandfather. And his bank manager in those days people talk to their bank managers. They had banks. They had a bank, yeah. His bank manager had two, from what I remember, had two children at choir schools. Uh, I don't know anything about that. But his bank manager said to me, what are you going to do in your life, Ian? I said, hmm, don't know about that one. I know. I said, I'm going to become a vicar. My grandfather fell through the ground he was, I think, quite shocked. <laughs> I myself was quite shocked when these words came out, but obviously God spoke these words through me. And three years later, of course, I gave my life to the Lord. And life has gone on since then. Um, had an interesting experience of being uh, a Church of England minister for quite a while, and then seeing the light <laughs> as Pauline would say, I saw the light um, and joined Ashby Baptist Church when I retired. <laughs> what do you mean, not quite? I joined the wrong one, I'm sorry about that. <laughs> That's where God led us. Um, and uh, it's just amazing what God has done. And I just thank Him and praise Him so that when you know this experience in your life there is no, no, no other thing that can compare with God's gift of his son to die on the cross in order, to, in order to forgive us and fill us with his nature with love no greater gift could be possible could it so he was as I say the atoning one who forgives our sin by his selfless activity on dying on the cross of Calvary and we benefit from God's incredible action 
as we're brought into a relationship with him by this act of love. However, that lays on us an obligation, doesn't it? Having seen what God has done for us on the cross, we cannot go back to a life of selfishness. Just as he has sacrificed himself, so the obligation is upon us to act in a self-sacrificial way in our relationship with others. It's a challenge. So thirdly, verse 12, it says this. No one has ever seen God, but if we love one another, God lives in us and his love is made complete in us. And I was reminded, I think it was the second song that we sang tonight. Uh, there are words in that which talk about the fact that we've not seen God. I um, can't remember the exact words, <laughs> but uh, um, I thought when I saw the song come up, I thought, hmm, that's very appropriate. <coughs> So John's third argument for loving one another is based on our ongoing relationship with others. God's present and continuous act of love. God is spirit. He's invisible in himself. No one has ever seen him, but we will see him when Christ returns. Hallelujah. So God is revealed in us when we love one another. And that love is imparted in us through the Holy Spirit. Our love for one another is evidence to the world outside that we have God dwelling in us. And that verse, uh, verse 12 says, uh, goes on to speak about the completeness, the perfect being perfected in him. That's quite an amazing concept, isn't it, when you think about it? being perfected in him. God lives in us and his love is made complete or perfect in us. So in conclusion, we are to love one another because God's love, God is love, secondly because God loved us and thirdly because if we do love one another, God dwells in us and his love is perfected in us. That gives us something to mull over, think about. Um, how much do we love our brothers and sisters in Christ, particularly within the, the fellowship here in Mission? Think about it. Pray about it. Just have a time of quiet now just for you perhaps to think about those words and how it affects you and how it's manifested in your life and then after that we'll sing a well-known hymn When I heard the telephone ringing, I thought, God's trying to say something to us. <laughs> pick, pick the phone up now. <laughs> Could be very embarrassing if you're in the middle of conducting a service, as you might imagine, if, you, if your phone goes off. I've only had it happen once. <laughs> Fortunately, I'll make sure I turn it off. We're going to sing, My song is love unknown. My song is love unknown.
just read to you some verses from uh, Romans chapter 12 as we draw our service to a conclusion. Love must be sincere. Hate what is evil. Cling to what is good. Be devoted to one another in brotherly love. Honour one another above yourselves. Never be lacking in zeal, but keep your spiritual fervour serving the Lord. Be joyful in hope, patient in affliction, faithful in prayer. Share with God's people who are in need. Practice hospitality. Lord, we thank you for your word. We thank you for the words that we have read and listened to and looked at this evening. We thank you for the songs that we have sung, praising you and asking you to inspire us and direct us in our lives. Lord, as we go out from this place, we just pray that we may be filled more and more with your agape love, that we may be overflowing with the love of Jesus, that others may be attracted to you from the words we speak, from the lives we live, whether we are at work, at home, or in other situations. We thank you, Lord, for the church here. We thank you for those who uh, witness for you in so many different ways. And we just pray, Lord, that you will build your church in a mighty way in this place, that it may grow and keep growing, and that the people of this district may come to know Jesus as their Saviour. And we ask this for his sake. Amen. Thank you. <laughs> we may be few in number, but uh, we're right, aren't we? <laughs> We've, uh, just, to tell, just to tell you, in case word gets through to you and you've not heard, um, we have appointed a minister at Ashby Baptist Church. Um, we actually had seven applicants, which is quite a lot, <laughs> um, and one stood out, very much stood out. Uh, he worked as a family worker and children's worker with New Frontiers in Leicester for at least 10 years. He's always gone to that church in the past. Um, then he got called into the Baptist ministry and has spent the last three years training for the Baptist ministry at Rugby Baptist Church. And he's now coming to Ashby with his family, three children, and wife. <laughs> and uh, we look very much full forward to some interesting developments that I think they're going to be, um, because we're very much seeking as a church to move forward and reach all these hundreds of people who are moving into Ashby. Um, I mean, they're building over a thousand houses, apparently, um, on Money Hill Estate, if you know what that is. It's crazy, isn't it? <laughs> Mind-blowing. Um, but uh, it's a real opportunity to reach out. So keep praying. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs>